violence and other kind of violence. What's good, YouTube? It's a Black Gen Z mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe. And let's get into the video. Well, the Republican gubernatorial primary in Georgia is a must watch race today. The de facto Democratic nominee for governor there, Stacey Abrams, sparked some criticism from the right over remarks that she made on Saturday. Take a listen. I am tired of hearing about being the best state in the country to do business when we are the worst state in the country to live. Um. Okay. Now, somebody's going to try to politifact me on this, so let me contextualize. When you're number 48 for mental health, when you're number one for maternal mortality, when you um, and I and I'm I, I know the maternal mortality thing is an issue. A lot of that has to do with that woman's individual health. Okay, maybe she's terminated some pregnancies in the past, which makes it harder to give birth in the future. Um, there are a lot of different factors that go into that. So um, it may not be the medical uh, professionals. It might just be personal life decisions, you know, living an unhealthy lifestyle to where you shouldn't even be having a child. You have an incarceration rate that's on the rise and wages that are on the decline, then you are not the number one place to do to live. NBC News senior digital politics reporter Alex Seitzwald joins us now. Alex, of course, this showdown in Georgia is dominating our news cycle. How are Abrams' Republican rivals responding to these comments? I mean, she contextualized it. She explained what she meant. She talked about the impact of, of mortality rates on women there. She, she explained it. But, but what are they sort of picking apart about that? How is, how is that reaction resonating? Yeah, Morgan, uh, Republicans are roasting Stacey Abrams over these comments. Uh, she was responding to Governor Brian Kemp, who she ran against in 2018 and might run against again in November, who has really been touting the state of Georgia's economy. Unemployment is low. Lots of businesses are coming. And she's saying, you know, that's all fine. But what about all these other metrics? Uh, but the, the words are that, that she used are certainly raising some eyebrows. Stephen Miller, uh, Donald Trump's former speechwriter called it perhaps the worst campaign slogan of all time. And take a listen at what. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> to call the state that you're running for governor for. To say that it's the worst state to live in. That's not cool, especially since we just won a national championship. You have a lot of people who take pride in the state of Georgia. I take pride in the state of Georgia, so I don't find it too kindly that she's talking about Georgia being the worst place to live. Now, I could see if she said Atlanta, okay, because Atlanta has their own problems, but once you get in that metro, not even, like, outside of the metro Atlanta area, bro, you're, I mean, you're pretty much good. You can live a nice lifestyle, low cost, don't got to break the bank, and you don't got to be around stuff like, you know, I'm I'm a I'm I'm more of a country dude. So <laughs> for her to say that is just out of pocket. She talking about maternity um or what did she say the 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 women who are dying in childbirth and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, you know, you have to be sensitive to that, but like I said, a lot of that can be contributed to personal choices. You know, being overweight can increase the likelihood of you passing away while giving birth. All right. So, you know, there's so many things that go into that. But David Perdue, the other Republican running for governor, had to say about it. And look, she got Jesse Jackson, the flip flopper on abortion right by her side. <laughs> it's crazy, y'all. Did y'all see what Stacy said this weekend? said that Georgia is the worst place in the country to live. Hey, she ain't from here. Let her go back where she came from. She doesn't like it here. What's wrong with that? 
she ain't rocking with Georgia, go back to the crib. But they're going to say, oh, well, this is what they say about Africa and all this stuff. If you don't like America, go back to Africa. Uh, so that's what that's why they're calling it racist. All right. Even though he lost, he he did lose. So, I mean, it is what it is. He had his time. He didn't, you know, he ain't do what he, he, he didn't take care of business when he was actually governor. So, um, you know, the, 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 the baton is handed off to Kemp. All right. The only thing she wants is to be president of the United States. She doesn't care about the people of Georgia. That's clear. You know, when we saw in 18 what she did and what she said, oh, we're going to have a blue wave, we're going to do it with documented and undocumented workers. You know, I don't think a lot of people in Georgia understood. And when she told black farmers, you don't need to be on the farm, and you, she told black workers in hospitality and all this, you don't need to be, she is demeaning her own race when it comes to that. That's some real stuff, though, because back in the day, we were doing most of the manual labor, and it was, it, there, there are some good paying jobs manual labor today and it just seems like the the young dudes they don't want to <laughs> they ain't trying to lift nothing but a strap they ain't trying to lift nothing but a firearm okay a stick as they call it so um we definitely got to get back to young brothers who are trying to build something for themselves getting into these manual labor jobs because it's being taken taken by documented and undocumented immigrants and that's a problem so that last comment there from david Purdue, demeaning her own race is particularly getting attention and actually overshadowing uh, abrams's own comments with lots of people including the new york times calling it overtly racist uh it, it is an odd note to say the least for david Purdue to potentially be ending his campaign on uh, observers have noted he ended his last campaign by talking about kamala harris uh, calling her kamala malama uh, making fun of her name and now uh, telling her, you know, to, to kind of go back to where she came from. Uh, to be clear, she was born in Wisconsin, raised in Mississippi, went to high school in Georgia, went to college in Georgia, has lived in Georgia her entire adult life. Uh, so she is a Georgia resident. And, uh, you know, you might disagree with what she has to say about the state, but she has grounds to stand on. I do want to make two things clear. Uh, contextually and historically speaking, when you tell black people to go where they come from, that is a racist dog whistle. I don't even think uh, that it can bruh shorty is two shades away from <laughs> this is the stuff that killed me bruh shorty is two shades away from looking like this man's wife like tell me you have not benefited from light skin privilege if if we want to say there's different privileges out here can be subvertive in any way it is an overt comment of racism and saying someone is demeaning their race is of course a racist comment what? and i think we should be clear okay. about how we characterize those things as always alex seiswell thank you so Absolutely. much for that reporting of gun violence is not limited to school buildings not limited to classrooms it's also hit churches and terrorized city streets in this country the spike in violence has taken a toll as well the cdc says guns are now america's leading cause of death for children you heard it we've we've reported on this before in tonight's Eye on America, CBS's Mark Strassman highlights an Atlanta program now trying to teach a life-saving lesson. America's scourge, Atlanta's tragedy. Everything just seemed normal, and then he just busted out his strap and started shooting. You, you heard what she said. He busted out his strap and started shooting. That was the Waffle House shooting. The fight broke out. Then they started shooting. We covered that one. I was actually in Midtown when that happened busted out his strap and started shooting a burst of alarming gun violence gun violence is out of control and we're going to put an end to it here in atlanta 66 shooting deaths here so far 56 of them black males it's become wow you saw <laughs> you see the stats and i'm telling you the 50 i can almost get whoo you this is what i'll say 66 of the 66 of the shooting deaths and 56 of them are black males okay i would go as far as to say at least 60 of the perpetrators are black too so you probably have you know a few gliders in there who shot their wife or something like that 
But when it comes to who's toting these straps, as the sister called it, and blamming stuff, these super gremlins are on demon time. It's become acceptable to use violence. It's, it's become acceptable for these knee-jerk reactions with violence. It's something that's so small, but people still will react violently. Joshua Bird's pilot program in Atlanta schools focuses on black teens, overwhelmingly victims of gun culture. Some kids are just lost. Like, they don't know nothing else at all. Hey, uh, yo, shout out to Jaquan. Shout out to Jaquan. <laughs> I know his, his his name. They gave him a disadvantaged name, but it sounds like he got a good head on his shoulder. Okay. Sounds like he got a good head on his shoulder. And he gets it. Some people just lost. It's over. <laughs> it's O-V. These super gremlins are on demon time. Like, they don't know nothing else at all. They're just lost. And is there any chance of reaching those kids? It's a slim chance. A, a slim chance. Across America, black males ages 15 to 34, 2% of the population, 38% of gun violence fatalities in 2020. 20 times more likely to die from a gunshot than their white peers. Wow. And that ain't because of the police which makes sixth grader Demonte Weems nervous. You see people with guns and stuff walking around thinking that they're the stuff because they have a weapon. Alarm. Man, these kids get it, man. They get it. The, the, the kids that are like, quote unquote, the educated lames, all right? Because a lot of these kids, if they ain't with that street mess, they will be considered an educated lame. All right, and you know, unless they're an athlete, an all-star athlete, but they get it, man. So I, I can't, I can't be like, yo, man, the youth. Look, I'm in the schools. I run boys and girls uh, club programs, and there are some kids who get it. Most of the kids get it, but then you have those few who just ruin it for the many. Like I said, seemingly, gun homicides nationally jumped. 35% in 2020. Bird, a former Marine and cop, volunteers with the 100 black men of Atlanta. Winning a fight might mean losing your life, right? He saw his first shooting when he was seven. Over 10 two-hour sessions, Bird teaches de-escalation. What we want to do is prevent the conflict and then go to the experts. And Walk away and live. It's got to be a community-wide effort. How do you punch through? They're looking for structure, and they're looking for consistency. And they need both quickly in a city where indiscriminate gun killings now wound its sense of self. For Eye on America, I'm Mark Strassman in Atlanta. I'm here on the corner of MLK and Medgar Evers, and it's a very tranquil scene compared to just a couple hours ago where a drive-by shooting just took place. Uh, uh, excuse me, I I'm getting live updates as we speak. I've just been updated to the amount of casualties from this drive-by shooting, and I'm getting reports that two people were actually declared deceased and 27 others were shot and injured, but are in stable condition. And although we must pray for the families of the fallen, we must also praise God for the aim of the super gremlin. If you want to know more about the victims of this crime, make sure you add BGZM News 17 on Patreon at www.patreon.com backslash Black Gen Z Mindset. Also, don't forget to like the video, share the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and comment on the video to continue the discussion on how we can find solutions to all this sun violence in the streets. For more hard-hitting news coverage from the Communita by the Communita, I'm Jen Quavius Jackson here live reporting from Atlanta, Georgia, BGVM News 17. And cut. All right, dog. Let's get the f out of here before these niggas come Whoa. back. Whoa. Yo. Whoa.
Nah, nah, that ain't me. That ain't me. That ain't me. That's not me. Jaquay hey, 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 here live. Reporting from Atlanta, Georgia. Pray for me. A late night triple shooting in southwest Atlanta's Mechanicsville neighborhood sends two men and a woman to the hospital. Yeah, please tell us the victims were all shot on the porch of a home on Windsor Street. Good Day's Mark Tigner picks up this developing story. He joins us live this morning from downtown Atlanta. Mark, good morning. Well, good morning, guys. And according to investigators, this started as some kind of uh, ongoing dispute that ended up in gunfire. Of course. Officers responded to multiple people shot. When police arrived at the home on Windsor Street in southwest Atlanta's Mechanicsville neighborhood, they found two men and a woman shot on the porch. Mm. They are all uh, alert, conscious of breathing. Thank God. And that is one victim away from becoming a mass shooting. Three people shot. They almost hit mass shooting status. So I want I, I want to. I wanted to illustrate that point because it's so important to know that it doesn't take much to have something be considered a mass shooting, especially when they're um, incorporating these things in the statistics. You have to understand the context of who's doing the majority of these mass shootings. And most of these mass shootings are something like this. Pookie and Ray Ray spinning, spinning the block and hitting everybody in sight. They're in stable condition, taken to local hospitals for treatment. Officers say around 1030 Wednesday night, a gunman opened fire on the victims. It appears they were the intended targets. This is an ongoing dispute uh, between people in the neighborhood. Uh, so we have some people of interest that we would like to talk to. Police also have surveillance video, which they hope helps lead to an arrest. We have a, a good footing on what happened. And we're going to piece it together um, and wrap this up pretty soon. Several bullets hit the home. Luckily, no one inside was injured. Police call this yet another act of senseless gun violence. We need better ways to handle conflict resolution. You know, you shouldn't be shooting at somebody if you're upset with them. The names of the victims have not yet been released, nor were we told exactly which hospitals uh, they're being treated at. Reporting live from downtown Atlanta, I'm Mark Teichner for Good Day Atlanta. Sorry, we'll continue to follow this morning. Mark, thank you. Police say a man was shot and killed while recording a music video, and he was in the same video as the suspected shooter. Channel 2's Cobb County Bureau Chief Michelle Newell is live in Marietta. Michelle, the suspect claims that shooting was an accident. Yeah, that's exactly what we learned in court today. The alleged shooter said they were all just making a music video and says the gun he was holding went off accidentally, but the prosecutor insists the shooting was intentional. Just last month, police were here investigating a homicide. 20-year-old Chalik Burkhead was shot and killed outside of this restaurant on Barrett Parkway in Marietta after business hours. Mm. People we spoke with in the area are tired of the violence. We have a problem in this country. We have a, a whole generation of people that have kind of moved away from our morals, moral obligations to society. The alleged shooter is Terrence Spear. He told police he was with the victim and three others filming a music video that was being recorded on his cell phone. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Terrence, he looked like he did it on purpose. Spear. He looked like he did it on purpose. And the reason why this story is significant because these dudes, when they film the music video, they playing with the gun like, ah, da, 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 da. like they got the gun in the camera and they're wild and they're looking crazy and and this is the type of vibe that they're trying to give off in the music video except this time uh he shot his supposed friend but the prosecutor says hey he probably did this on purpose and i wouldn't put it past him i wouldn't put it past him okay um and we've saw these situ we've seen these situations in the past like uh Lil Loaded, I believe. Is that his name? Something. The the rapper who ended up uh taking himself out, right? He he accidentally shot his friend um in a music video. So they're playing with these guns and then they try and go online and say, Oh, well the, the guns were props, bruh. <laughs> we don't believe you. He told police he was with the victim and three others filming a music video that was being recorded on his cell phone. Spear told police the video was supposed to show a staged armed robbery. 
All of the people in the video, including Spear, had a gun. Spear told police the rifle he was holding went off accidentally. Burkett died at the scene. And they are so bold, they filming a music video with guns at this restaurant. Did they ask the owner that they could do this? Did they get permission? Because that seems crazy to me. The way I see the thing, everything right now is, is we've, we've kind of entered this state of lawlessness in this country where people think they can just get away with all this stuff. Yeah, and a lot of them have been. They're getting sent right back out on the streets. Spear and Antoine Malone are facing charges that include murder and armed robbery. Today in court, during a probable cause hearing for Spear, the lead detective who took the stand said security cameras captured the group dancing with guns and later showed Spear and Malone pointing a rifle at the victim's head more than once. Wow. So there you have it. They were caught on camera. So they're filming, and then they're also caught on camera. Bro, these, these dudes is slow, bro. Spear is then seen on the same security camera stealing a gun from the victim and mm. took off with two others. Dang, so it was just, it was just, I told you guys, he stole the gun from the victim. I told you guys that these dudes, they, <laughs> they don't care. In, in Atlanta, they will take a gun from a person who has a gun. Like... They don't care. They'll rip your strap right off your hip. Up their gun at you. So that they can take your gun. Okay. And the judge ruled that there is enough evidence against Spear for the criminal case to continue and denied bond. Malone is also in jail without bond. Reporting live from Cobb County, Michelle Newell, Channel 2 Action News.